I V M. This IPL season from 27th April to 3rd May with the Cred Mega Jackpot Week, you can win big with crazy jackpots unveiled every day and offers from partner brands on specific days. Prices include a Harley Davidson Fat Boy bike and many other amazing jackpots. I can't wait for this and neither should you. Just download Cred. There used to be a sex toy shop next to where I used to live. I was just like, oh my god, if I go inside, they're going to ask me questions, or what if, like, you know, somewhere, somehow, my parents would turn up, or you know, like somebody in my, like, you know, in my society would turn up, which obviously is not going to happen. But there was just like irrational fear that you have that you know this is not the safest thing to do, this is not healthy. But cool, it took me six months. Go inside the shop. The first question that you encountered is. Hi, can I help you? Which is a very average question to be asked to any prospective customer. And you know, I've been like noticing this a lot of time that whenever people ask anything to do with sexuality, they just say that you know what my friend was asking or my you know like my cousin was asking. So I did the same. I'm here to buy something for my aunt. Hello and welcome to the Filter Coffee podcast. We seem to be in the middle of another startup boom in India and there are so many ideas around us seeing the light of day in terms of VC investment. One of the most underrated and underreported phenomenon around us is the sex tech industry. An industry that is recession proof and so relevant today and valued at over 30 billion dollars globally. But it is not easy as an industry to be an entrepreneur in as my guest shakun sethi uh, will tell us today shakun is someone i have known on twitter for a fairly long time and she's in the middle of a second startup tickle.life a company that describes itself as someone on a mission to transform the way the world looks at sexuality and femininity and after spending time on the kind of globally relevant and sexually positive content they create i'm a huge fan i want to talk to shakun about her refreshingly unique entrepreneurial journey and what led her there and what a day in her life is like welcome to the filter coffee podcast shakun how are you doing i'm doing good and thank you so much karthik for inviting me this this sounds interesting and i'm very excited because this is going to be the first one in india so oh really ah yeah. okay okay <laughs> and and where are you talking to us from i'm back home i'm in jammu right so yeah so i'm at my parents house uh enjoying the covid era <laughs> from here so yeah so so that's how, that's how it is the team is um completely global right now so mm. we don't have like two people in a single city which is very strange wow so yeah so so different time zones different countries different cities so it's interesting talking of which um how was 2020 for you work wise fabulous mm. uh a lot of excitement a lot of insight made a lot of connects a lot of partnerships personally it was just like you know going back to being a teenager again because you move back home yeah the food is like you know served to you 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 go back to the room which you had like while you were a kid so so it's just like two extreme things happening together because one you're working in a sex tech startup which like you know sometimes you really have to close the room <laughs> like hoping nobody comes inside because you're talking about things which usually people would be very uncomfortable with but then yeah you know like your parents are taking care of you so it's been an interesting year altogether beautiful and uh, you know i'll come to the sex tech part of it and um, and also your your entrepreneurial journey in in just a bit but shagun i want to start off with you know a line from your about us section on your website right it says we are on a mission to transform the way the world looks at sexuality and femininity Uh, yeah. w- what is the change that you're seeking see we all are just working to a single vision and the vision is in next 5 to 10 years when you go and you meet somebody or when you're sitting in a living room with five different people you can easily and openly talk about things 
which are completely hush hush or completely a taboo right now, which actually they should not even be. So just making sexuality acceptable, and when we talk about or when we incorporate femininity, we just do not mean people who might identify as women, but we are talking about women. people who are biologically women people who identify themselves as women and even men or even any gender that there are who have feminine side to them so it's more generic it's just like you know we just want to change the way people look at what they are feeling and how they want to take it forward so i find all things about tickle dot life the organization that you founded extremely sensitive to gender stereotyping exactly the way you just said Uh, while also being able to talk about sexuality like for example you spell the word woman uh, on the website differently as w o m x n yeah. which of course is a practice that began as early as the 70s and is considered a, yeah. a spelling devoid of sexism that arises of Absolutely. course by the use of the word man as part of the word woman yeah so it's just important because the most important thing is and if you've been uh, seeing the website or the platform right now it might look a lot feminine mm-hmm. and that's something to do with the month of march but what we're trying to do is we are trying to encompass any and every gender any and every sexuality together because what we understand is that the most important thing for anyone in the world is to understand what is sexuality for them so it's mm-hmm. not about how i feel it's not about how you feel it's about anybody and everybody what they feel so a very important facet of this is also a sexuality because that's also a kind of their sexuality and that also becomes a imperative part of tickle dot life mm. because we are not here to make changes on a certain level but what we're trying to do is we're just trying to aggregate as much as possible things that are happening all across the world into a single place because mm. the major problem which actually happened with me was when i was you know curious about finding solutions or finding answers i really had no idea and it took me approximately 2 years to find right you know those two or three people and i was like you know what this is not right something's absolutely absolutely gone wrong and then how do you know who you are So when you have those questions what do you do you provide a single place for anything and everything mm. so it might our focus might sound or look as being very feminine but on the contrary what it is is if you think that you have a feminine side to it irrespective of who you are great and that's how it's supposed to be right and you know you spoke about in in this answer your journey itself uh, yeah. in terms of tickle dot life uh, why don't we uh sort of talk about it in in more detail i think correct me if i'm wrong but i think for the most part of your career you've been some sort of an entrepreneur i think you were at edelman probably a very long time back now yeah. um and then you've been an entrepreneur right um how and when did you think of this as a as an entrepreneurial venture so the only job i had with edelman was for 9 months and that's my entire career when i had like a you know like a paycheck coming every month but just because i was an i was an executive so obviously that paycheck was not enough suppose that i have been running an agency which was into crisis communication and pr so i think somebody deep inside you're already ready to handle any crisis and that's that's what you know gets your uh, boat rocking and then something happened i just realized that okay fine what's happening am i learning am i growing as a person or am i just here you know churning day in and day out having a fabulous team but what do i bring to the table just a tag of an entrepreneur is not enough and then something very very funny happened i decided okay let me just close my shop let me take a sabbatical and let me just go and travel and let me just go and study so taking a sabbatical at an age of 28 which many people is like what's wrong with you you should be to take you know get married find your place uh in a like who studies here when you're already working and people usually study to get a job and you are never going to get a job period you're like unemployable um but yeah so i was waiting for my visa and sitting in a starbucks hmm. and there was this old guy most probably he must be in his like late 60s or early 70s and he was looking at porn 
And you know, Karthik, the smile on his face, as if, as if there's no worry around. He, he's the happiest guy. And it just was fascinating. And even though I was just like trespassing that person's privacy, but I just could not help it. I, I just kept on staring at him. And somehow deep inside, like subconsciously, it just registered in my head. And then where do I reach? I reached Netherlands. Hmm. Everything is open. <laughs> um, but Netherlands was also a part which just made me realize that I have so many issues and I'm not as open as I would think of myself. There used to be a sex toy shop next to where I used to live. And I just could not go inside. Mm. I was just like, oh my God, if I go inside, they're going to ask me questions. Or what if like, you know, somewhere, somehow my parents would turn up or, you know, like somebody in my, like, you know, in my society would turn up, which obviously is not going to happen. But there was just like irrational fear that you have that, you know, this is not the safest thing to do. This is not healthy, but cool. Took me six months, go inside the shop. And the first question that you encountered is, hi, can I help you? Which is, which is a very average question to be asked to any prospective customer. And just because I was so scared, and you know, I've been like noticing this a lot of time, that whenever people ask anything to do with sexuality, they just say that, you know, what my friend was asking or my, you know, right. like my cousin was asking. So I did the same. And just because subconsciously that old guy was somewhere deep in my head, my thing was like, ah, I'm here to buy something for my aunt. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and then, you know, like you, you just question yourself like, huh, what? Like, aunt? Like, hello? <laughs> what? Uh, but yeah. And interestingly enough, the salesperson was so nonchalant about it. And the only mm. question was, what does she like? And I think the journey started with what does she like? Because the question and the arguments that you're doing with yourself is like, holy shit, I don't know what I like. How would I know about an aunt who I don't even know exists would like? That's completely like, you know, bullshit. Like, I really have no idea. And I just told her like, hey, let me go home. Let me look around it and I'll come back to you. So I did do that. I did look around and I could not understand anything. What is vulva? What is a vagina? What is a clitoris? Why clitoris is, you know, like so, you know, why most of the toys are, you know, focused around clitoris? What is like mega what? Oh my God, there, there might be Karan. Like there's so many questions. And yeah, so that's how the journey started. Ended up going to more than 100 shops all across Europe, asking the same question. I'm here to buy something for someone because I just did not want that, you know, they're asking me questions because, you know, then my experiment will completely go off. Came back to India, organized few meetups, random meetups with single people with a very focused, like, okay, fine, the target audience is people who have traveled abroad, who have a certain, you know, uh, exposure, who are like from MTV's era. People don't know things. It's that sad. People do not know. People do not know even basic things like what is consent. People go out on dates, but they're shit scared that, oh my God, am I supposed to ask? Am I not supposed to ask? Am I supposed to hold hand? Am I supposed to kiss? Might as well, you know what, just sit home and keep on flirting with some random person. You know, so that's that's the state that we are in. And that's how Tickle.life started. So That's, that's a beautiful story, right? Like the, the story <laughs> in Amsterdam. Um, because I was just thinking, you know, as you were talking that, um, that, that question about what does she like? Um, it's a it's an exploration we we don't spend much time on, isn't it? We we spend a lot of time on understanding the physics and the chemistry of cooking. Uh, we spend a lot of time on everything that has to do with our with our jobs, uh, but we don't spend time on exploring this in in depth. Right? That's uh, how sad Absolutely. is that? Absolutely, it's very sad. It's it's horrible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and and what a shame, right? Um, but but you know from knowing that this is a need gap, uh, which I'm assuming is is what uh, you know your discovery is, um, and to be convinced about this as a startup idea, I mean that must have been a a journey by itself, right? And Absolutely. at what point did you think that yeah uh, you know this is a journey most people are not take, taking? From there to I want to make sure that people take that journey. How how did that leap happen? 
so so after those meetups when you just start realizing that people have switched off the music people are drinking but people are talking and they are like you know still at my house till 6 a.m and i have to throw them off and it it did not happen just once it happened at least like three times that's when you know that something is happening and, and you know something is cooking so just me commissioned an app a very shitty looking whatsapp kinda app i was super ashamed to show it to anyone but just like you know like you know slightly you just spread the word we are from communications you just like spread the word and just see how it changes an anonymous app and people who started responding and communicating so we had like 5000 people on day one and just because i did not know anything about tech completely crashed day 3 and that's it <laughs> that was experiment and that was like you know what whatever happens this is your life hmm. so so started talking to a lot of people started talking to a lot of people in india uh, just because i was so scared because you just feel that you know people will start misjudging you and you know it's a difficult ball game and you will be like you know categorized as a sexologist and that is like you know in the nice terms otherwise god knows what people will be calling you so it just makes life a little difficult but i think it was so exciting seeing like you know how people are reacting how people are seeing how people are responding how you will go and just meet some random people and just you know pitch in or peg in uh, something which is little sexual in nature and then you'll get a call at night that hey can you help me figuring out this out so so yeah so i ended up finding people finding uh, some influencers some doctors some sexologists but i could not find in india so i could just find in north america hmm. and and then somebody i was talking about this from day one who's also a first investor japan bears he actually once told me on the phone either you do it or you stop talking about it choose and i just could not stop talking about it so so that's how it, it worked so so created a company in us so tickle dot life is a us company had problem with creating a bank account nobody was ready to give us a bank account and then it hit me like sh- holy shit this is going to be what do you mean nobody was ready to give you a bank account um so because uh you know this it has sex in it hmm and a lot of organizations a lot of uh you know bigger players all across the environment are not able to segregate between what is well being and what is a part of adult industry and porn so when they are not able to then you know what is the safest bet that hey it's anything to do with sexual well being let's just like avoid giving them whatever support they need so we did not get a, a bank account and i'm talking in us terms i'm not even talking in india so then i had to figure out ways of getting us you know a bank account and then find the right people to help us with a bank account my lawyers actually had to train me how to answer questions and i was like i am giving them business but i would be interviewed so this was like pretty strange for me yeah but but yeah i did that started finding right people and and i think there's something very interesting when you really want to do something things just happen and you just start finding right people and you just need to know how to segregate right from wrong you just have to understand that when you have to listen to people and when you do not have to like the first blog post which went on tickle dot live which was very censored um i got a call from somebody who's really close to me and his thing was like are you opening a porn site what's wrong with you just close it just delete the blog post and obviously there there's like you know some doubt in your head that maybe you're doing something wrong but you have to listen to your guts and i did and a year back he just offered that hey can i come on board as an advisor because you people are doing some crazy shit so so yeah so it's about you know listening to yourself trying to figure out what it is and since this industry is so new there is a lot of experimentation and we are lucky enough to have that team have that global support somehow for some strange woman sitting in india you know talking to people all across the world getting invites to burning man and you name it like you know we are we are just working with them from at least from right. the content point of view so things just start working and think it's it's just like a you just see that you know a, you, this a revolution that's happening and you're just like a very small part of it but it is so exciting <laughs> i'll come to the revolution and uh, you know the, the global scenario with it but you know before we get there uh, shakun 
now you have created an app it has crashed you learned your lesson um, yeah. you know how this is going to work and then i'm assuming at some point you also need to communicate this to family and friends and <laughs> and well wishers uh, well wishers how did that phase go how how challenging was that <laughs> how challenging was that in terms of explaining to them oh why this is a great startup idea so i'm a big drama queen hmm. okay so before i decide that i'm going to tell my parents because apparently they were seeing that something is happening some money is being moved from my account <laughs> to some strange places so obviously something is happening so i did a research on what if you are disowned what happens then do you change your surname <laughs> are there some you know less some legal components attached to it who's going to be my lawyer i planned everything Right. So my parents were sitting in the you know evening having coffee. I'd already talked to my brother about it. He's also one of the friends and family round investor. He was pretty cool with it. He said as long as I'm not doing this with you, I'm okay. Because that might sound something strange, so I'm not there. Uh my sister knew about it like I have two siblings. She she was also okay about it, but she just was like, you know what, I don't get it, so I just want to see what the progress is. So my major concern was my parents. So then I go because I've done all my research, and I know if I have to pack my bags, it might take me approximately five point six hours. Period. You know, like completely calculated to pack your bag. Absolutely, pack my bags, and <laughs> and and I'd already hired a lawyer, uh, who's still my lawyer, and I'm calling him, and I think you know what, I might need you. <laughs> so if I need you tomorrow, then be ready. So so yeah so my parents are sitting and I just told them that you know what I'm I'm trying to create something which is into sexual well-being that's going to be my new startup right uh and I'm closing my previous startup because it was still working and my dad just looks at me and he says can you just elaborate what you're doing are you getting into porn <laughs> and I was like no I'm not getting into porn but this is going to be you know people have sexual needs desires complications how do we find solutions and they both were quiet just shh, no sound no complete silence and i'm just looking at them and looking at them and then my dad just asked me one question do you think you will you will be ever put behind bars for this is this illegal and i was like no and he was like okay and then i actually had to ask him are you serious <laughs> this is what i'm trying to do at least show some expressions something some drama i've done my homework but nothing and my mom's response was that i think my friends would need this so whenever you you know like bring in like different languages maybe they'll need it but just don't put your name <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so so that was my journey my friends were okay but i did know that i can't expect them to share i can't expect them to talk about it openly which does not happen much still but that's a part and parcel of life you just have to take it like you know you just have to choose your battles so so it's fine we do talk about it like you know like in closed chambers they mm. have problems they will call me and then i will refer somebody or something but nobody will like you know openly put this on their instagram that you know tickle dot life is run by so and so person or i know what to do or our posts are not reshared a lot in the family so so yeah so that's that's the journey And I'm pretty sure you're not sharing content in family WhatsApp groups at this point. I'm off all the family groups because then they ask like, "What does she do?" I don't want to explain to each and every one. They're not important to me. Let them keep joining. Jokes aside, uh, I've just become a huge, huge fan of your parents. Uh, I thought the way they reacted was very cool. Yeah, but I guess you might not have been uh, this lucky with others, isn't it? Especially since you said. you had a family and friends round of investment early on during that journey and maybe even afterwards what are some of the biggest discouragements you've heard i've i've heard like a lot yeah yeah a lot like what, I, what do you what do you normally hear what, what do people tell you when they say you shouldn't be doing this things like i hope you've decided that you're never going to get married because now it will be very difficult to get married things like oh my god like you know are you sure like somebody who's in india is going to date you so this is like more from the personal point of view things like uh, are you are you making something into porn are you going to be next porn star things like you know you don't understand what is good and what is bad because you're just going too too deep into it yeah like 
and and you just listen to it and then you just smile right. and then you know they will just find the the most controversial a uh, page from the platform and then they will send it to you and they'll be like see i told you this is what you're doing so, so yeah so so i think it's people like 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 opportunities and it just completely depends on you whether you take it or not did you did you have to go for another round of funding from uh, yeah, the yeah the friends and family we are raising right now so we've mm. just started raising and there was a reason why uh, we just wanted to figure out what exactly we are doing because it looked so big and we were just like we are just like we do not think so big when we started and while we started doing it and we started finding solutions to all the problems that come in this industry we just realized that you know we are not even adept at going and selling something when we ourselves are not able to comprehend what we are doing so so now after like a lot of experience a lot of experimentation and no if and but from anyone uh because that was pretty clear made to friends and family and when i'm talking about family there are a few angel investors there mm. who came in the who who just like you know these people just saw like we were just at it for so long that you know maybe like something might come out of it uh so now we know exactly what's happening now we know exactly what do we want to create now we know like okay you know what these things are not going to work out and because this is my second startup so i just mm. was not ready to just waste somebody's money just to figure things out the money should be used to grow not to experiment right i i mean i wish i could say that a lot of lot of entrepreneurs like you but i i, I doubt that uh especially in india mm-hmm. uh, but it, you know uh, just just going into the category that tickle dot life operates in itself in my opinion healthy and judgment free content you know around sex is, is almost rare to find right in mm-hmm. india uh it almost seems to be non existent in in this part of the world right because and that's also for example just the number of times you mention people asked you about porn when you were talking to them about tickle dot life probably signifies that's probably the only thing that they have access to at this yeah. point right uh, is this a very india specific problem which is lack of healthy and judgment free content around sex is this an india problem or do you see it as a global problem um i wish it was just india's problem life would be so easy uh and that was also my assumption but it's a global problem and the global problem is just not because of what people think it is but it's also because uh like like i was giving an explanation of the bank so same goes with shadow banning of different platforms mm. so until unless you're not sorry when you say shadow banning what do you mean for the benefit yeah, of absolutely, banning yeah absolutely absolutely i was trying to explain it as well shadow banning means like you know when you're searching for something a lot of time you know important things might go down or important things you're not able to see until unless you use exact terms so suppose if i want to go and find kartik i might you know put kartik on the search and there might be multiple kartiks and then there will be one of you, you know like you so it's closer but it's still not your full name but here what happens is a lot of sexual wellbeing content until unless you just copy paste the entire thing it will not come up so that's shadow banned you know it's shadow banned so it's not exactly banned but it's it's shadowed a bit so like i was giving example of the bank same thing goes with all the big tech platforms so suppose if i want to talk about women's reproductive system and i have something amazing that you know i've written as an individual or as a sexologist i am a phd holder or an md i just wanted to reach the to the right audience so i will put some money on facebook advertising for example facebook would not accept it you know so when facebook is not accepting it it's not coming to people like arthik and shakun it's just still at that person's profile and that too if by some miracle you know facebook doesn't figure it out through its algorithm and they just don't delete it and you know small things like you can't put a woman's nipple on instagram you can't put you know exact terms like sex on instagram you have to use terms like s 3x s a x i should not be giving more because otherwise a lot of people would not be able to post but you get the gist of what i'm trying to say so when a lot of these problems come it becomes very difficult to be discovered or discoverable you know because otherwise it's so easy for any sector that you talk about so if you have a podcast and if you post something it's easy to be discoverable but if you have you know some content which has sexual connotation to it they just categorize it as porn 
Mm. So when they're categorizing it at porn, porn industry has shitload of money. But actually, that's a different topic altogether because porn industry also has like multiple facets. There's ethical porn, and then there are tubes. Yeah. And what we people get here are tubes. We don't get ethical porn here. So that's actually the problem because of which people are not able to discover. Second thing is we all know about SEO, search engine optimization. and everybody is not competent enough number one to create search engine optimized content second thing is a lot of content cannot be search engine optimized if i'm again talking about a female reproductive system i cannot be talking about five things to look out for hmm. you know it will be an essay it will have some uh you know scientific paper attached it will have the right domains attached so it just gets very complicated but it's just because you know those facilities are not available and that's the problem that even we were facing and that's why we started realizing like if we are figuring out solutions to become ourselves discoverable and then making all of these people discoverable that's something bigger than what we were doing initially which was just to educate because you can't educate if people are not able to find you while well, it is not related to what we are discussing about uh, uh, in terms of your journey or tickle dot life Uh, do you want to spend some time on on what ethical porn is Absolutely. just for those who don't know Absolutely So there are different organizations uh, you know in the porn industry so porn industry works like how Hollywood will work or how Bollywood will work or any of these industries will work So the artists are paid they get a contract they are completely checked for you know for any STIs STDs even during covid there are proper checks that are being done most of the porn is created offline as in if suppose if i was into you know if i was a, a artist i don't have to go to the studio i can do it at my house with my partner and i'll just send it to them and they will edit it so ethical porn is which is completely legal which is done with permission and which is done at a smaller level like you know like people actually have started even sending their porn uh, created to uh, different platforms like you have platforms like lustry you have mm-hmm. platforms like make love not porn so they stream porn which people create willingly to them and then a percentage of whatever they are being making okay, goes to the creators so that's ethical porn which is completely ethically created and like any other art absolutely like any other art and it's like you know i know like if i am a creator and i created something it's there and i've given permission for it to be there you know so that's ethical and then you have something called i would not say tubes are unethical but tubes are more like aggregators and for a very long time what had happened was the tubes were just picking the the porn movies from wherever they were getting them from so few of them were plagiarized few of them were authentic but most of them were actually plagiarized so they were not making money like how they would make money like you know how these producers were making money by making those videos but they were making money through advertising so what happened was industry as a whole completely got a hit because only those tubes started making money through advertising the producers who were like you know individualist producers and studios they started not making money and that's when you know like things started changing like a lot of ethical porn that was created became lesser and lesser because people had to make money and they were started you know cutting corners and creating more tubes creating more content which was just like you know hey i'm going to pay you $10000 for the shoot okay but mm-hmm. i know inside that i might be making like 100 million dollars out of it just just a random number so without permission not done in proper ways not done in proper studios not done with proper care that started happening so it was a complete journey so right now during covid the interesting thing was a lot of ethical porn started getting mileage and the reason was simple that now people had so much time they wanted to see quality they wanted to see story which if you have ever seen porn hub or or whatever tubes you use there are no stories you know so so that's how you know they have started going up again but yeah. obviously the way they were in 70s and 80s when you had like real p- good porn it was an art form is completely gone so so yeah so that's the difference and and we always say that you know if you're buying porn pay for it because if you're paying for it then the producers will take care of their actors the actors will take care of you know other people and you'll have a better and a 
fulfilling environment and then good bond can be created which is talking about consent uh how to take care of each other and it's just not like you know penetration right and it's also more enjoyable a spawn absolutely absolutely yeah. and you have to understand that we still understand or we still get educated through porn so what porn we are seeing can have a major difference to at least our kids if not us so if we are paying for the porn and if those movies start coming out then the chances that our kids would be more sensitized would happen rather than yeah. still watching those you know like those 2 seconds clip or 2 minutes clip or whatever the time period is yeah and i guess you know associated problem is also that you know good erotica almost doesn't is non existent on the internet right um uh, from <laughs> from a textual perspective right you know that that brings me to to the content that that you create uh, shakun you know like with uh, the series that is on your website which is uh, professor sex i find it extraordinarily objective while also managing to be fun you know like uh what with the seinfeld interludes on humor and and everything else right it's it's very smart fun yeah. and at the same time it it's objective and it also talks about uh sex right absolutely uh, and and these are conversations which you otherwise don't uh necessarily have uh, it's very difficult to find let me put it that way right yeah. how did you arrive at this tonality of content because i feel that it seems like it's a very tight rope walk right one way or the other it could be either crass or too funny or or too frivolous right but you manage to walk this tight rope with the tonality of the content how, how do you pull that off by just putting ourselves as the customers we are the customers we don't mm-hmm. have to go out and look out for other customers we're not selling it to anybody else if parag my co-founder can see it and get out of it anything if shakun can see it and she doesn't get it if my team doesn't get it then it's not the right content that's the first thing second thing is who are we working with like right now we are working with our over 350 organizations who are those people we just do not take random people we get a lot of requests from a lot of escort centers uh, we do get a lot from like you know porn sites and we are working with few porn sites also don't get me wrong but we are working with ethical porn sites so what happens is we are very particular about who we are taking content from So we have three different components. One is we are the biggest aggregator in the world for sexual well-being content. So we aggregate the best of content, but we still do not allow people to upload their own content. And that's because we also want to see what kind of content goes in. Hmm. Second thing is the content which is original, which is created just for Tickle Dot Live by these three hundred fifty people. That content is completely into our hand. What are people looking out for? and how we understand that is through social network we do a lot of licensing we do a lot of club houses now we do a lot of organizations and meetups we have pre covid era we were part of a lot of lgbt parades globally what are people asking for and you know when you get those emails and most of our emails are in spam when people send them and they're asking for their own sex queries that's where we start understanding what are people wanting so we have to direct them that hey you might be talking about shibari art but people actually are still confused what is bdsm and what is foreplay hmm. but they want both you know and then they're watching 50 shades of gray which is i'm sorry a shit movie because it is completely you know like like actually it's horrible don't watch that movie and if you have <laughs> don't follow it um is like you know people really really want to know about it like like day before yesterday somebody called me a 25 year old boy he was my friend's friend and he was telling me you know like what's happening between him and his girlfriend and i was so sure that he was talking about foreplay or maybe role playing but he was using a term bdsm because he thought that's bdsm so you know so these insights you get and we all get insights and we all put all of them together and that's how we create those original content and the third kind of content is like back to basic who are we working with we're just working with very few people who who really really get us who understand that we are learning i don't know things and my team also doesn't know a lot of things you know so we do not know stuff so if you're teaching us that's what you're teaching outside and i i'm not somebody who's going to read like a 5000 word book I want something which is like you know which is completely dumbed down for me to understand 
so that's the kind of content that we create even like a podcast which is run by another of our uh, producer gaya so that also has been created in such a way and the idea actually came from my experiences that when i was talking to a lot of influencers or you know experts in these fields i was so in awe of them like i could not even question them because i did not know like what if i'm going to offend them are you supposed to use a certain pronoun are you supposed to you know say miss ma'am name oh my god what's happening like you know bd what was d what was s fuck so um so that's actually a podcast that we get people from the industry mm. to talk about their own lives so they're talking about their first kiss they're talking yeah. about you know their foreplay they're talking about oh my god i'm a man and i thought i had erectile dysfunction but actually i just wanted foreplay which i did not know that i did you know so when you start doing it you just start sensitizing and you just make the discoverability easier because then i can relate to you hmm so that's the entire environment and that's how exactly we we work on we are not here to teach anyone we're just here to learn right and i particularly love what you're doing with the podcast right and i think uh, many platforms like feed spot have recognized it as one of the top sexual health and wellness podcasts and i listened to 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 some of the episodes you know you you spoke about a few i listened to many episodes including one which was about someone talking about her first time with with oral sex with receiving oral sex yeah and uh, again the same kind of a tonality right i think um what what i really observed about it was there was a lot of fun you know there was a lot of giggles there was a lot of uh, explanatory sort of conversations but at the same time it seemed like a very safe space yeah um it it's it's like two people conversing without you know having the fear of being judged uh, by the audience or or anybody else for that matter right yeah how is the audience reacting to to that kind of content especially uh, from an audio perspective so see one problem we are always going to have or at least you're going to have for next like one one and a half year which I'll also keep on telling to uh, VCs or people who are interested in working with us is that our traffic and our engagement is not going to be as much as other platforms and the reason is because i might not share you know like hey listen i heard this podcast and i think it's really cool because i don't know what if the other person is going to judge you know or assume that you know what's happening with me am i this horny that i keep on listening to this like what's wrong so but otherwise what happens is we do know that whoever listens to our podcast episode they keep on coming again and that that same mm-hmm. thing happens with our content that same thing happens with back to basic so it's just like you know once somebody comes in they do not go out but we do know that we we can't expect them to press the share button which is okay let's use multiple ways let's talk to people like kartik let's talk to other whatever ways there are in this world to let people know about us but don't expect that you know people will talk you know from one person to another there is a big potential of virality but the thing is we are actually pushing from what people actually have been thinking about virality we're just not talking about menstruation we're also talking about sex during men- menstruation and i'm pretty sure people will be like what's wrong i'm not going to share this like not happening to not happening <laughs> you know um, <laughs> that is i that, hope that i'm not is... making you uncomfortable no not at all yeah? uh, in fact um, and these are questions i'm sure everyone has wondered about all the time isn't it in fact uh, this is actually a great segue to my next question as well you know you just mentioned uh, the back to basics section on your website yeah uh, where you discuss many fundamental things into understanding sexuality and there is a section on spiritual sex which i found uh, very interesting and i'm going to quote here start quote sex and spirituality have always been together ever since the beginning of human consciousness in ancient india when sex was considered a, a sacred healing tool and not a sin people came together to practice it as an act not just to experience genital orgasms but to explore much greater psychedelic realms of cosmic energies and to expand their consciousness along with a with a soul shattering orgasm lasting longer than the modern sex model which is animalistic and short and coat you know this reminds me of of something i always believed which is um, that this country 
used to be so ahead of the rest of the world in wearing our sexuality on our sleeve and ascribing deeper meanings to it than just the titillation which is all we seem to define it by today um somewhere we seem to have regressed to a point where you know like you just asked we need to keep asking each other if you're making the other person uncomfortable by merely discussing it have we completely misunderstood sex in its modern interpretation absolutely absolutely and it makes me feel so sad and quite frankly i was the same um like i'll give you an example we were because we are talking about healing and there was healing component at, added to it so we do have a instagram live which happens every saturday so i was super excited looking at the topic and it was about you know how masturbation can help in you know if you have migraine so that was hmm. a pretty cool topic that you know if you have migraine attacks you know if you masturbate it they, they can actually help you just do not have to go and run for medicine you can actually give yourself some self pleasure and might feel better so it's such a fabulous topic and there are so many you know added components attached to it but the kind of questions that we were getting was so you know they were just about penetration mm. you know we're talking on menstruation dude what's up but questions like okay so if i'm going to menstruate will i be able to penetrate you know will my dick still get erect so so you just understand the difference like here the sex is penetrative sex which is like you know maybe you kiss maybe you fondle right. then you penetrate that's it what is foreplay 1 2 3 1 2 3 you know and that also a lot of it has to do with those 2 minutes videos that we watch in porn sites so if we yeah. actually are ready to buy those 15 minutes porn videos maybe you know like our perception might change like i was telling you about myself also the first time i met somebody who's practicing BDSM and she is a submissive and she spent around about half an hour with me explaining me what what it is and we were meeting out for coffee and then she just told me like hey i've been practicing it for like 7 years but i was a virgin till 2 years back and it just did not like i was just like hello <laughs> like what just happened with me was this a joke like i spent 25 minutes with this person and now i know that you know what what happened and that's the interesting part because we actually have been nurtured i think it's a very positive term to use to think that sex is penetration right which it is not sex yeah. is a lot of other things it's it's about communication it's about touching it's about feeling and and that's actually you know like that's that's the change that we would like to see because if you're talking to somebody sitting in the living room again they should not think that hey you know what this person is super horny it should be like oh this person is inquisitive the same way this person is inquisitive about what is the recipe of making custard maybe right yeah you know? right. and and that is such a shame <laughs> isn't it uh, some of the most memorable sexual experiences we will have um, will not be penetrative but what you just said also reminds me of another aspect of your business that i wonder about now i know tickle.life is a global platform but you also have a substantial audience from india now i don't know if this is a typical indian behavior but i think it is it is safe to say that our comments sections have not necessarily been the most objective in the world in fact i was just reading an article uh, by a friend who had put up her number for covid relief and uh, she got sent uh, dick pics which i think is the is the most depressing thing i've read in recent times how much of a challenge is moderation for you especially when you're discussing sexual wellbeing you know strangely enough the kind of comments or the kind of inquiries that we get they are actually trying to say something or they are asking something the only difference is the level or the information needed is very very basic and that that's when you realize that whatever they must be doing was wrong or they do not understand what what it is but the quality is still really good like we received this email few i think a month back and this man had actually put like a i think it was like a 700 word email i'm 70 years old these are the medication that i take my wife is 65 these are the medications that she takes I like having sex. She stopped having sex. 
because she has joint pain i don't want to have sex with somebody else i want to have sex with her what should i do please tell me how can i take care of her joint pain so that we can enjoy sex how beautiful today i got a uh, i actually saw one like just before this call we got it on twitter and and it was like hi i'm a virgin my wife is a virgin we want to have intercourse what should we do so they are very very basic questions and these questions were supposed to be answered much before you were married but but you just understand that people are ready but we do get questions like hey i have a dick do you want to see it <laughs> so so you just have to you know what live with it and you actually have to start also understanding and that's what the team has started understanding mm-hmm. because like we have like really really cool advisors who have studied human psychology for a very long time that even if a man is sharing or asking to share their dick which apparently and which i think everybody will agree is not a very beautiful body part to look at why are they doing it you know what are they looking out for what kind of confirmation are they looking out for so when anybody gets these kind of emails in the team they are trying to think about it mm-hmm. you know and accordingly they they decide whether they need to encourage by responding or they need to completely forget about it and also how it is impacting the team because mm-hmm. there are a lot of triggers like you don't know maybe this is your story and there's a lot of mental health issues involved as well when you're talking about your sexuality yeah. so how do you take care of them so so it's just like we just have to create you know a system but but overall the messages or the like i told you when we were talking about masturbation and migraine we did get question about you know if i masturbate i might not be able to have an erect dick so but these are questions this is not as a like you know they are being negative in any term they just don't know yeah it's it's amazing right like we we study differential calculus in school yeah um but uh, things like sex or things like menstruation or things like food we don't really spend any any time on it right during during our formal education uh, sorry there was there was just a rhetorical observation <laughs> uh, but uh, you know you started the conversation chakun by talking about uh, the the sex tech industry right? yeah um firstly that doesn't seem like you know a term that everybody is uh, is comfortable with or everybody even is cognizant of right so what is the sex tech industry and uh, why is it such a promising business venture if you were to objectively look at it okay so anything the technology is used for anything to do with sexual well being is sex tech it's mm-hmm. similar to anything where technology is used to provide education is edutech it's same with sex tech and that's how we come under it but right. then then people might say oh you're also part of uh sexual wellbeing education you're also part of you know wise startup but that's how we are different we call ourselves sex tech we call ourselves okay education is a very important part we are a marketplace but we are not a wise because we are not making toys we are not selling toys we are telling you what toys you need to use if you're using we're telling you how to use them you if you want to use them but you're not buying them from tickle dot life we are not here to buy we are here to just make these people self sufficient for them to direct you to the right places hmm. and when you're talking about the industry the industry is so huge it's more than on the books it is the sex tech industry is considered to be 39 billion dollar industry and that was before 2020 2021 issues with covid after that it has seen approximately an 18 to 25 percent growth so the oh, only wow. industry <laughs> which has grown at a time and the entire industry was just like you know hello what's up what are we going to do so this is the only industry where which is recession proof and if absolutely a very small validation if there are pawn industry people and veterans who want to work with somebody like us tickle dot life it just shows where the adult industry is changing and they are getting into education they are getting into well being you know so that actually shows that you know there is a bigger chunk so when we call ourselves that okay fine you know what if we have to look at what is the industry size that we have or the market size it's a market size of 139 billion dollar market because we are talking about sexual behavior market right that's how we become bigger but this is all which has been documented 
and it's even bigger than it's been documented and that that's the problem that we started seeing that the entire ecosystem is fragmented that people don't get everything together at a single place so this is just like the figures which are available but the figures must be way higher than what we are anticipating right now right right no and yeah. i'm not surprised i think we we're living in at a time when you know places like pawn hub are opening themselves up for for display advertising right which yeah uh, so far has always been uh, just incestuous to between pawn sites and and the probably the sexual medicine and the the <laughs> sex toys industry right so the yeah. first time they're opening it up to to fmcg companies and others you know who who would want to advertise right interesting time but coming back to a tickle dot life perspective what is your revenue model are you looking at content subscriptions how are you planning to uh, okay so uh, we have multiple revenue models so we are a marketplace number one we are marketplace for content so there's a subscription model hmm. as an experimentation we've already been uh, providing content to few apps which are into erotica which are into you know bots where you know people can go and play with bots so we are already doing that on a global scale so that's like the first one which is like you know any content or any media house that works the second one is it's a marketplace so when it is a marketplace whatever services are being sold however marketplace makes money that's how we make money third one is we are launching courses very soon so we're already done with most of the courses and they will just like you know start going out so that becomes like the education component to it and the fourth one which is very interesting is while we have to do all of this we need our own tech because mm. i already explained you know like everybody is so happy and so nice with anything to do with sexuality so when we are creating our own tech we've started giving this tech to the industry as a whole right because ultimately if we want everybody to come into the living room we have to make everybody self sufficient so we launched the first podcast hosting service which is sex positive in the world in february we have like a different department altogether which provides marketing and seo support to a lot of other platforms we will be initiating newsletter service very soon so and this newsletter service is also because we have our own newsletter service so our newsletter does not go into spam so it's about the tech and it's about the consultancy put in together so that's how whatever we are creating we are also going to be you know start selling them outside so then it becomes more like a b2b to c so complete discoverability so once you're making yourself discoverable to the end users people who really need information but to reach there whatever components are needed we have to create them we are not outsourcing them so that's actually a very interesting model which just which just came up because when we were working with so many people here and they would be like how do you do it and why we not able to do it we've been on it for like 15 years 20 years but and you're just like a year old right so yeah so that's what we started doing because we do not want us to be banned and that was what happened when we created our own podcast or when we decided the team came back my co-founder came back and he said we are not going to do this and i was like why he said because what if we are banned tomorrow and we are going to put so much effort into it so the solution was let's create our own hosting service so now let's give it out to everybody it's wonderful and and i can vouch for the newsletter not going into spam please because i just <laughs> subscribed to it this week uh but i'm i'm most excited of all the things you said about the the education part of it right um who do you think is your is your target group when it comes to people signing up for these courses uh so we have just experimented with few and that's where like when we go out when we have you know different activities all across different platforms uh to figure out what should be our first course so there are two courses which will be coming out very soon one is for people who are already in a relationship and how do you bring in spark so it's an amalgamation of uh you know global component and people in india if it's going to be for indians but it will also be released globally so in globally it will be like you know one person from their main country and one is the person who's actually created the course so it's it's always going to be more global because you know just being in your own room does not help hmm. and that's something that we are very clear with that we do not want something which is just like hey i'm in india i'm in maharashtra so i want somebody in maharashtra that doesn't work anymore right. we all are watching netflix yeah. we are all watching you know all the otts balaji all pala so 
So, so yeah, so that's one. And the second course that we are coming out with is just for the industry. So in the industry, a lot of people join the industry to sell a lot of their products, like affiliate products. Hmm. So they know about the products. You mean the sexual well-being industry? Absolutely, absolutely. So they do know about the products, but they do not know about anatomy. They do not about the toys. They do not about a body. They do not about senses. So how do we make them more self-sufficient so that when they are going out selling to anyone, they know what they're talking about? And in a way, sensitizing people. So that also helps at the end of the day, the discovery part, because who's going there to buy? People like us. People like, you know, who might lie and say that my aunt is looking out for something. (laughs) And we're still figuring out what she likes. Uh, One day, one day, one day for sure. (laughs) If I find my aunt. (laughs) (laughs) Wonderful. Uh, Shaka, this has been most, most fascinating and, and inspiring. Um, we we usually end the episode by asking our, our guest uh, what he or she is watching, um, listening to or reading. What's what's kept you up? Oh, my God. A very difficult question. Um, I'm actually watching a very funny show on Netflix because I, I just think that, you know, there's so much happening around. You just want to just go and switch your head off. I love shit. Greek. So I'm like, I'm I'm on I'm on my like four three run, <laughs> and I'm just thinking like I should like you know just like stop being Netflix because I keep on watching reruns. So I'm still on Shit's Creek, and this has been there for like past four months now. <laughs> Excellent. And then what do you, what do you listen to? Uh, are you much of a podcast listener yourself? Um, do you have the time for it? Not really. I just like, you know, whatever people do, I recommend. And whenever I have some time, I just switch it on. But most of the time, whenever I get time and people think that that's not the right way of doing it, I like to just completely switch off. So I do go for a hour drive every day. And that's like the only time I have, but I never carry my phone. So I don't even switch on music. I just want to be like, you know, with myself and just think like, what happened today? <laughs> how was today like why or what's going to happen after an hour right. so I'm more of a person who just like to you know like live with myself so I'm a bail I'm, I'm a loner in the real sense I don't need people I don't need things I don't need knowledge <laughs> it's the most most efficient way of doing this isn't it <laughs> yeah yeah I think that was actually what my therapist taught me like that was the first money that was spent after opening Tickle.life because your brain is completely like whoosh what what happened why yeah. so so yeah so that was the trick that was given by them and i've actually started enjoying it that keep something like some open space some empty space which is just for yourself so that you can actually understand what you're doing and why you're doing it because that's what all my advisors tell us either you're going to make it or you're just going to go home so if you have to make it, so let's just keep something off to yourself. <laughs> yeah, I think it's one of the most underrated things to to not do anything. Uh, and I'm not saying this just uh, <laughs> for fun. I think, I think even physiologically for, for your brain, it's, it's better that it has the time to sort of recuperate and analyze and learn from it, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, yeah. I, I'm loving it now. It, it, it was very hard initially. It took me like three months to not do anything, not to just switch on something, you know, Spotify, podcast, something, but not anymore. Shakun, it's been a beautiful discussion. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much, Karthik. I really had fun. Thank you so much. So did I. Thank you. If you like this podcast, don't forget to check out other interesting podcasts on the IBM Network. You can listen to us on the IBM Podcast app or ibmpodcasts.com. You can also follow us on our social media. We are at IBM Podcasts on Twitter and Instagram. And if you want to reach out to me, I am the underscore Karthik. That's Karthik with an H on Twitter. And filter underscore coffee. That's coffee with a K on Instagram. I hope you enjoyed that show. If you aren't following us on social media, please do. We're IVM Podcasts on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. We'd like to thank our sponsors this week, thewholetruthfoods.com, PayPal, Cred, and Seat. Thank you so much for working with us. We really appreciate it. 
First up this week, let me tell you about Cyrus Says. We featured popular YouTuber and actor Prajakta Kohli, who took us through a journey of content creation. We also had conversations with Vasanti Hari Prakash and Sachin Kalbag this week. Really, really great, great, great conversations. Do check those out. Vineet Kanabar goes solo this time on Storytellers and Storytellers as he talks about his favorite IPL ads and how brands have been making content around the cricket league. On The Habit Coach, Ashton was joined by Arjun and Somesh of the Fighting Goat podcast to talk about fitness for combat sports like the mixed martial arts. On Nankari, Sadaf and Archit discuss the diet and lifestyle of athletes with the host of the millennial athlete, Shok Ramchandra, who is also a pro badminton player and coach. Ambarana opens the fourth season of Noyer Kanun with a list of things he has planned on the show for us, including episodes on immigration law and on career prospects for law students. The IPL season's on and we've definitely got you covered. Tune in to the Edges and Sledges podcast if you're looking for English and if you're looking to listen to something in Hindi, definitely check out Kale Niti. Both are great shows with great takes. And with that, I hope to see you again next week. Come learn and experience the ABCDs of being queer with me, Shunetro. And me, Farhad. On our show, Gay BCD. The two of us take you through our stories and experiences of being gay men in the city of Mumbai and have candid and sometimes downright scandalous conversations about sexuality, gay culture and everything in between. Catch new episodes of Gay BCD every Tuesday on the IBM Podcast website, app, or wherever you get all your podcasts from.